Hello, Chris McIntyre, the artistic director of the Mato Festival. I'm sitting here with Matt Wright. He's a composer, turntablist, and improviser, I guess you could say. Anything else you'd add to that list? No, that's, that's fine <laughs> with me. Um, he, uh, Matt was commissioned by Mata this year to create a work for our Sound Works um, pieces uh, a presentation at Le Poisson Rouge's Gallery Bar. Um, he made a piece called uh, Totem for Gobi, New York, and um, it has audio and video, interactive audio and video, and um, we're very excited to present Matt in the, in the U.S. for the first time. And um, thanks for coming down to the Mata office. Thank you. And coming to New York in general, I guess. Um, so I wanted to just try and give uh, people who are going to come to see and hear the piece um, some context for it um, and um, I mean obviously context for pieces like this is your whole career that led up to it <laughs> yeah. I, I realize yeah um, because you don't I mean I, I my my personal understanding of installation work and I've done a little bit is that um, it kind of encompasses so many different aspects of one's thinking about about uh, music making but um, what exactly um, um, obviously, travels to the Gobi Desert inspired certain aspects of it, but but musically speaking, what are some of the things that are happening mm. in, in the piece? Well, I guess um, one of the one of the main things is this is this word totem. Uh, uh, this is the first piece that uses that that term, um, and there'll be a few other pieces in the future because I the one thing I like about working with installations is obviously you work with a much you can work with a much longer time scale mm -hmm. than you could do in the concert hall, potentially. Um, and this sort of lends itself to a particular kind of way of listening and a particular mm -hmm. kind of way of composing, which um, I've sort of thought of as, as totemic. To me, um, what I'm trying to, to sort of investigate with this piece is a way of listening that is similar to perhaps looking at a totem pole. Mm -hmm. Um, nobody tells you how to read a totem pole. They don't tell you, you know, you must start at the bottom and you have to finish at the top. Right. Um, and each individual uh, totem that's represented um, has a particular resonance for, for people. Okay. Some, some much more deeper than others, of course. Um, so there's a kind of non-linearity mm -hmm. um, about the piece. Um, but it's also about, I, I guess, in kind of investigating a form of of uh, non-development mm -hmm. um, so that the experience of the piece is less about um, getting somewhere because from zero seconds in the piece you're already there yeah, virtually right. everything is is presented nearly um, right at the beginning and actually so where in a kind of concert hall piece there might be some idea about we're progressing through something we're getting somewhere. You start in a way. You there's a beginning almost. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And so the uh, so the, hopefully the feel of the piece is actually rather than kind of uh, starting and getting somewhere, you're actually just sinking deeper mm -hmm. um, into the piece. And it's I would say it's slightly less about time and much more about space. And that of course is helpful that we have this surround sound yeah. in the club. So. It is possible to go to one speaker and there'll be a real kind of identity for that speaker. Yeah. Um, so that's that's one of the ways of uh, sort of explaining the title. What um, I've heard some of it. Um, can you just talk about what some of the material is that this in the piece? Like, what are some of some of the component parts of what we'll be hearing? Yeah. Um, well, there's essentially three kind of families of material really. Um, I. I I heard about the, the commission about a week before going to Mongolia, to the Gobi Desert. So when I should have been fully immersed in saying, wow, what an incredible landscape I'm in, I was saying that, but at the same time, wow, I've got this thing to make for New York. Yeah, it's, right. it's amazing for me because I, I kind of grew up um, with uh, uh, sounds from this city. It's a very, very important city for me, as I'm sure it is for many people. But... Um, so I, I had that, that kind of sensation of driving and driving and driving um, for days um, in the Gobi Desert 
and seeing this landscape going by and thinking, hmm, this is, for some reason, this is very much like driving across the surface of a record. After a while, it kind of became, you know, um, a, a kind of uh, ritual almost. It's kind of so planar and so sort of flat and... Yeah, and the, the, the debris and the animal bones and the skulls and so on, it was, it was almost like this sort of bits of static and the mm -hmm. ghosts that you can hear on records and Christian Marclay when he was uh, talk, talking about using records, he was talking about kind of releasing ghosts from the from the vinyl. So that explains kind of two of the, the families, if you like, of, of um, the, the sounds that we're going to hear. There, there are fragments of sounds from or recorded in Mongolia, okay. so some aspects of kind of um, throat singing, which essentially is known from, from Tuva, which is... Um, to the north, but also is very prominent in Mongolia, and some uh, amazing Mongolian um, folk singers and bells and so on. Um, so that's the kind of Mongolia representation. Right. The New York representation, the other kind of side of the hyphen in the in the title, um, is to do with uh, turntable static oh, okay. and small, very very subliminal fragments of music that I love from this city. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I thought, okay, so there's this totem pole that's kind of stretching uh, from Mongolia okay. to New York, but I'm writing it mainly in England. Right. Um, and at exactly the same time as kind of finding out about the commission, I was mixing um, an album with Evan Parker. And so right. his uh, sounds have kind of found their way into the piece as well as a kind of representation of of uh, perhaps the UK or certainly my state of mind about yeah, the UK at the time. So really it rotates around, those three planes kind of rotate around each other in, in the piece. Yeah, yes, very global. <laughs> I guess so. It's, I wasn't trying to be a kind of pan-globalist at all, but I think the piece is kind of representative of a quite surreal state of mind of being in one place, thinking about another and having just been doing lots of recording in another place yeah, as well yeah. and it's a, yeah. I think this goes back to what you were saying about uh, installations and um, the, the way they could be constructed I, I think they're very different potentially from concert pieces in that maybe in a concert piece you might want to pursue one idea and need to perhaps refine those ideas to, to go in a certain direction of course you certainly need to do that with an installation but you've also got the opportunity to almost collect sounds, almost like a diary of the things that were occupying you yeah. at the time you were working on it. Or well, certainly that's how I um, look at it, where with a concert hall piece, it's more like this is the output from my office, if you like. Yeah, Whereas yeah. an installation is have a look around the office. 